Ram 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 Hari Hari Sri Prabhupada Ki Jai. So today we're going to continue reading from questions that Prabhupada was asked about the spiritual world. And we had left off reading. There's a lot of questions about how we ended up here, which is, of course, the question, but in Prabhupada's mind, really not the question. <laughs> the question is how to get out of here. How did I fall from the 12th story? Did I fall from the 12th story? Or did I fall from the... Just get an ambulance and get to the hospital. No, but I need to know where I fell from. Why do you need to know? You just need to get to the hospital. That was kind of Prabhupada's mode of operandi. Anyway, in the, in the course of reading the questions, these questions come up, so... We're going to read them. Hmm. Question today we're going to start with. How can we be envious of Krishna in the spiritual world? Ooh, interesting question, isn't it? Hmm? Interesting question, right? Okay. So stay tuned for the answer. How can we be envious of Krishna if we're in the spiritual world? It doesn't make sense. Because, well, you can't stay there if you're envious. Does it mean you were even in the spiritual world? Is it, anyway, these are interesting questions. It's part of... Um, it's part of the excitement of Krishna consciousness that is your questions that are hard to answer because it makes us think more about the philosophy and how to answer it. And that's good. When you go over your mind, in your mind, you go over in your mind about the philosophy, that's good. Isn't it good? It's because then you're thinking of the philosophy rather than thinking of how can I be happy, how can I enjoy myself, etc. So... So even if you can't answer it, even if it becomes a big question, that's okay, because then you're contemplating your mind. Is it this way? Is it that way? And then you're, you're going, you're finding out what Prabhupada said about it, you're, and, and your mind is now absorbed in thinking. Could it be this way? Could it be that way? Prabhupada said this, he said that. This means this, possibly that means this. But what if this, and how could he say this if it were that? That's not bad. That's actually good. Sadhya Rupa is like that. She has a questioning mind. So questions lead to thinking more about the philosophy and absorbing your mind more in the philosophy, so that's great. So keep thinking. And so some of these questions are going to be like that. You're... We read yester we read one yesterday, I believe, and and it was like, well, it could possibly mean this, it could possibly mean that, and then you have to expand definitions. What's the definition of this? Prabhupada says the spiritual world, is he describing Vaikuntha or is he just describing Brahman in general? Or does he mean everything is spiritual? There is no material world because he said he's defined spiritual in these ways. When he says you are with Krishna and Leela, does he mean everything is Krishna's Leela? Does it mean we were instated in our rasa and fell? Is that even possible? Now these, and then, and then you have to understand. Well, what is rasa? What is prema? And can one fall from prema? Is that possible? We know you can fall from bhava. Because you have the example of Jad Bharat. Well, can you fall from Prema? Then you have to study what is Prema. And so it one question ends up you end up becoming educated about many things in order to understand the answer to that question. So I think it's good sometimes if we're confused about something, because then it causes us to start questioning things maybe we would never question before. And then studying things we have never studied before. So it's good. So, 
Anyway, today, this is the question, first question, how can we become envious of Krishna in the spiritual world? And I wanted to make a special announcement today that by the grace of Rachel, Rachel is from Israel, Rachel found something interesting. She found the original Bhakta Burfi videos. So Rachel, if Rachel comes on, we will ask her to post the link. And you can see the original Bhakta Burfi videos made in London. And it shows them basically, a lot of it is about all the bad ways they chant. And it's quite funny. It's very British. It's British humor. <clears throat> and the um, video ends when the Maharaj is writing on the chalkboard that you should be enthusiastic and very alert. And he turns around and they're all sleeping. They're laying down. And he has to figure out, how, how are we going to wake them up? So he says, Prasadam, and they all jump up. And that's how the video ends. And um, when you watch it, you, you realize how, what we already know, but it's just a reminder that how awkward it is for the conditioned soul to be so regulated <laughs> and controlled. <laughs> to have to control my mind for two hours, that, that's not easy. I have to follow rules and regulations. So it's quite funny. So if Rachel comes on, we'll, we'll get it. Otherwise, I can put it on my Facebook page. For your transcendental enjoyment and a reminder of all the foolish things that we do. Uh, and you can identify, maybe you can identify with Bhakta Burfi. That's <laughs> Bhakta Burfi is funny, but we also may identify with him, which is not funny. Which is the sad truth, the sad reality, right? Okay, just give me one moment and we'll be ready to go. No, no, no. We're trying to... We have a new background for you. But it's a bit slow. I have to set these. I have to set everything up. Which I should do beforehand, but I was working on something and it made me late. Radha Madhava Kunjabi Shodanandana, Rajajanaranja. 
Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Sudhimate Bhakti Vedanti Shamita Namane Namaste Sharashati Deve Gauravani Pichani Nyavi Sesa Sanyavati Paschati Adasai So let's begin reading. This is um, Kamaniya. You, can you put it up? Um. Krishnagarshi says, Bhakti Prabhu has more problems than he had in those days. The world has become more complicated. Life of Bhakti Burfi also became more complicated. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I've been fascinated a little bit by artificial intelligence and robots and how you know it's going. It's going to this point, point where a robot can will look like and be able to do everything, or apparently do everything a human being can do, maybe better, be smarter, more beautiful, and then never get old. It's going to be interesting. And it also seems like Maya's trick that, like you say, life is more complicated, but we have more gadgets to make life simpler. And how did it become more complicated? Um, in my own life, I see that the gadgets that make life simpler they don't make it simpler. It It's true. They make it easier. But then, because it's easier to do things, you just do more. And then your life gets complicated. Like, for example, before technology hit a certain point, and, and also a price point that's affordable, if you wanted just to make a little flyer or a little plant pamphlet like we do all the time, to advertise a program, you had to go to a graphic artist and pay them well. They weren't cheap. And it would take them a while. And they were doing everything by hand, pasting. That's how it was done. You couldn't do it at home. But now you can do it at home. So that means there's, there's something more you can do that you couldn't do. And, it, and you see there's many things like that that we couldn't do before that we can do now. So even, So it made it simpler to do but then it, it it put it in our hands where someone else used to do it, which made our life simpler because we weren't doing it. Now it made it simpler to do 
but made our life more complicated because now we're doing everything. And there was a an old guy who was coming into, I guess he was a consultant, and when he came into the boardroom, everyone was on their phone. And he said, what are you doing? And they said, what? Well, I'm checking my mail, I'm checking my voicemail, this and that. And this guy didn't use a phone. He goes, I have a secretary to do that. So life used to be simpler, even though now it's, it's easy. It's, life is not simpler now. It's just easier to do things. But the problem is we're doing more things. So life has become more complicated. Also, as you know, in the simplicity so-called of it all, there's complexity in just operating the programs because like one time I was doing a Zoom program and they couldn't get it to work. And it started a half hour late. They were trying and get me on. They couldn't get on. And so, so we've all had those problems, right? Um, technical problems with software, with apps. So it's supposed to make your life simple. Um, but sometimes, I don't know, not everyone has this experience, but if you're working in audio and video, sometimes you get a bug and you can't figure it out. And it takes hours and hours and hours. And usually the solution is like, oh, you had this button on, it should be off. But it took you three hours to figure that out going through Google. Oh, I had the same problem. Try, I tried this, 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 this. None of it worked. And, you know, and then you, you call them, or you write an email to the company, and three days later they give you an answer, and the answer, you can't understand it. You know, it's like, so... It's just interesting how Maya's got everybody just like... Like she'll, the way Maya works is she'll divert you from Krishna somehow or other. That's her program. She'll just keep you diverted. Okay, let's see what Sri Radha says. I read an article about when email came out. It was meant to help with communication efficiency and then turned into people sitting at their computer for two hours when they get to work to answer emails, now probably even more than two hours, yeah. Um, there are days, there are days, well, like my average day with email and WhatsApp messages, on a good day, it's two to three hours. And if I miss Answering messages, like some people say, oh, you answer messages so quickly. Yeah, because if I don't, then the next day I'll have minimum four to six hours. And if I don't go for two days, then I have minimum 12 to 18 hours. So it's like, life is like, like sometimes I, I'm a little bit frustrated because I want to work on projects which require closing down the universe so nobody get in, can get in touch with me. And But the way everything's working now is working in real time. So if they don't get in touch with you, they want to organize this and that to confirm this and that. And if you don't get back to them in that day, then it throws things off. So life is much different. And so obviously I'm doing more things than I would do with snail mail. But the interesting thing is, Prabhupada did everything with snail mail, and obviously Prabhupada did infinitely more than any of us will ever be able to do. So his, his and he, it's so interesting because sometimes I've heard stories where Sri Jakirti would say that Prabhupada would read his books in the afternoon, like if there were no darshans. Like he had everything he had to do, he answered his mail, and he had... He answered his mail every day, which was like three or four letters a day, maybe six. Yeah. You know, so if if you if I only had six emails a day, that would be like, wow, I'm on vacation. So, but you know, it's different to write a letter than send it. Easy to send an email, difficult to write a letter, more difficult because you have to write it, you have to have a paper, you have to have an envelope, you have to put the address on the envelope, you have to have a stamp, you have to seal the envelope, you have to go to the find a post box, you know, it's like a whole thing. And you realize that if you had to do that, probably most of the emails you sent, <laughs> you would send. And of course, also in those days, we weren't dealing internationally. We were usually dealing locally. 
not even nationally. Everything was done locally. It's so so easy to, to, to do things locally because you actually see people and you're dealing with them. I have people doing things for me. I've never even met these people. I've ne never met some of them. I, or I met them for uh, an hour and I, you know, in, in the midst of meeting hundreds of people and I can't even remember sometimes. Okay, who was and sometimes they have the same names, like which you know. It's, so it's it's a very awkward world we live in, for sure. But the point is that Maya will use all facility to cause us to somehow get diverted. She'll just whatever it is. Oh, there's a new app, and that'll divert you for a couple hours. Or there's a new software, you can do this and that. Oh, it's just what I need. This is really cool. We just. We just got a software that makes logos, like really high-end logos that you would have to pay a lot of money and, and spend a lot of time to make. And now you can make them probably in 10 minutes, but you could spend 10 hours going through all the thousands of logos, right? So, and previously you couldn't make the logo, but now you can. So it's like, oh, another diversion. So, Maya is really good at diverting us, um, isn't it? Isn't she? Yeah. Life is not getting easier. It, when, you know, when I think of growing up, life was, like, pretty simple. My father came home from work. He didn't have any email to answer. He wasn't on his phone. Phones weren't that such a big thing. Maybe everyone would have to pay for your answer for email. Yeah, okay. Ten dollars an email, then I get rich. You will have less emails or you will be a millionaire. Yeah, I, I could use more money and I could use more time. That's a good idea. First, you, um, I have to go, your email is not approved. <laughs> Your email is not pre-approved. That will cost you ten dollars. <laughs> Maybe someday it'll come to that. Hare Krishna. Uh, I double check with Anuradha if we are continuing to read in order. Then we're at verse would be March second, nineteen seventy-five. Okay, you're looking at the question document. Mark. Uh, are you looking at the questions document? Um, da -da -da -da. Maybe you're looking at the other document in the spiritual world. This is what I remember. Um, we were taught, I don't remember. Lakshmi, is that true? In Italy, they say we were better when we were worse. Yeah. Okay. Every email will cost you $108. Mm. I think you're on a different document, no? I'm on the questions about the spiritual world. I thought we had finished it in the spiritual world document. Anyway. Let's go, let's read this. If you can find this Kamaniya, it's on page 11, Questions About the Spiritual World. Morning Walk, February 19th, 1976. How can we be envious of Krishna? It's interesting. The last verse we read Wednesday from the Question Stocks was Morning Walk, January 5th, 1974. Are you sure? Let me go back. Let me go back. Do, 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 do. Mm. I am totally lost because this this just comes up where we left off. Mm. Mm. And I remember anyway.
Hold on a second. We were reading a conversation with Prabhupada and Jodi and everybody in London. Um, I want to read this one, Kamaniya, February 19th. 1976. Uh, I don't see even the one you're talking about. I'm confused. That's not good. Okay, let's read this one. There's a confusion here in my brain. Let me read this, because I definitely remember reading the one above it. But I don't remember reading the next one. Mm. Yeah. So, Guru Kripa asks, There is also a question in that same line. They say that in the spiritual world, we say that everything is peaceful. There is no birth and death. There is no material conditions. So, if the conditions in the spiritual world are so nice, and everything is spiritual, spiritually, everything is spiritual. How is it that one can become envious of Krishna in such conditions? This is a very... Achyutananda, the original sin. Does anyone remember reading this? You say we're on page 9, but we definitely we read the one above it, the conversation with Rivatinanda. The one right above what I'm reading on page 10, we definitely read that, unless I skipped around. Anyway, the original sin... Sudama, why are we envious? Guru Kripa, how is it that if everything is free from envy, free from bad elements? Prabhupada, yes. How is that, Prabhupada? That is independence. That is independence. In spite of all these things, because you have got little independence, you can violate Sudama. It's a very hard thing to understand, Prabhupada. No. It's not difficult. It's not difficult. I don't remember reading this, but I remember reading the one above. Atyudananda says, It's not difficult, they don't want to understand Prabhupada. Because you are part and parcel of God, God has got full independence. But you have got little independence, proportionally, because you are part and parcel. Achyutananda. No, their idea is that they want to blame God for their predicament. Like a bad child, you know, says, Well, you made me do it. Prabhupada, yes. Sudama, what can I do? Prabhupada, no, they say, Why you gave me birth? They say like that. Like, in other words, they're blaming Krishna for us coming here. So, again, this point has come up several times. It's a philosophical point. It's not being discussed it's not being discussed in a practical way. It's being discussed in a philosophical way. How can you become envious? Because you have independence. How could you leave Krishna? Because you have independence. How can you follow the material world? Because you have independence. So that's the idea. Excuse me. Yeah. And so that point we've already made, we've discussed that, I think, quite sufficiently. It keeps coming up in Prabhupada's answers. It's just like the standard answer. The standard answer of how could this happen? How could we be envious or if we're in the spiritual world? And, you know, how, how could uh, what seems to be against our philosophy, even illogical, how could it happen? And again, it's not clear... The questions and what Prabhupada's answering, the specific context, is not clear. It's just a general idea. We turned our back on Krishna. That general, how could we, the general question is how could we turn our back on Krishna? Not if we were in Leela and we fell from it, but the general question Prabhupada is answering is how could we turn our back on Krishna? And Prabhupada's saying, because you have independence. And at any moment you can become envious. At any moment, you can try to be independent. Although, you can't be independent, but you can think you're independent. That's Prabhupada's answer. So, it's a philosophical answer. The nature of the jiva, the individual souls, they have independence. 
little bit, not com not complete independence, little bit independence. So Krishna gives us independence and we can do what we want. Well, not ultimately do what we want. There's so many things we want that we can't do. But so you have, you can try to do what you want. You're not going to be able to do it all, but you can try. So you have little independence. And because you have little independence, you have the right, you're given, you're endowed with the freedom to misuse it. You're endowed with the freedom to say God doesn't exist. You're endowed with the freedom to say, I don't want to serve God. You have that freedom. You're endowed with the freedom to become envious of God. You're endowed with the freedom to try to become God. You can try. If you're that unfortunate, you want to try, you can try. That's Prabhupada's point. So, now we just have more questions. They're very similar. Next question. And this is entitled, No Sin in the Spiritual World. This is from a lecture, but it's a question. Ridananda said, it, he's, he's asking a question on behalf. Um, he's asking a question on behalf of another person. If there is a spiritual world, what is it like and what are the activities there? Prabhupada, same activities, simply there is no sinful activity, that's all. Um, not the same topic, um, but I thought that was such an interesting answer. The Krishna Karshani is saying, I'm not convinced that we can misuse our independence. I'm not sure what she's not convinced of. I think she's not convinced that you could misuse it once you're in the spiritual world. Obviously, you can misuse your independence anywhere else, and you can misuse your independence if you're in Brahman, and you can misuse your independence if you're on the stage of bhava, preliminary love of God. That that we know. That's the, the, her her. She's not convinced that you can misuse your independence once in the spiritual world. And and so that begs the question: When Prabhupada says you fall from the spiritual world, how is he defining spiritual world? Is it in the spiritual atmosphere, but not on the spiritual planet with Krishna? Yeah, that's uh, what many people would say. But again, did I fall from the fifth floor? Did I fall from the hundredth floor? No, just get call the ambulance. doesn't matter. Worry about that later. Just get healthy. So that, that's basically Prabhupada's point. To, to understand not where you fell from, but why you fell is what's why you fell. Yeah. Why did you fall? That's what we're meant to understand. And the reason is because to get out, you have to reverse the consciousness which was created to cause you to fall, cause us to fall. So if the cause of falling was misuse of independence, if the cause of falling was envy of Krishna, then utilize independence and overcome, remove, purify your envy of Krishna. That's the solution. So that's, that's kind of why Prabhupada sticks within that context. In, because he, he doesn't, you know, even when he's asked, where do we fall from, he doesn't spend a lot of time explaining it. It's, it's more like why. And even more than why is how to get back. and Which is just reversing the process of why, you know, you came through this door, you have to go out through that door. You came through the door of envy, to go out of it, you have to be free from envy. You came through the door of independence, to get out of it, you have to give up your, you have to surrender your independence to Krishna. So that's... What does it mean to misuse our independence? Look in the mirror. That's your answer. You get a body. Try the, to... <laughs> Go in front of the mirror and say, what did I do wrong to get this body? Uh, pretty much everything. Um, misuse of independence. It's funny. We have this saying, I'm playing God, right? You know, which means I'm trying to control, trying to enjoy everything, control everything, playing God. But we do a really, you know, we do a really bad job of playing God. Plus, God loves everybody. So, you know, you can't really play God unless you stop playing God in that sense because you can't love everybody if you're trying to play God. So it's kind of like a, it's a funny thing to say, I'm playing God. We understand playing God means I'm trying to imitate 
controller, the position of controller, the position of enjoyer. But if we're not doing a good job of playing God. We actually can't do a good job of it. It's impossible. We can only try. So misuse of independence is we're trying to play God. Okay. Aditi, everything in your life you can use for Krishna or you can use for yourself. As soon as you use it for yourself, that's misuse of your independence. <laughs> it's like I give you, here, Aditi, here's around 100 rupees, go buy me some toothpaste. And you're like, oh. And you go into the store <laughs> and you buy, you buy yourself something to eat and you use my money and you don't buy the toothpaste. That's a misuse of your independence. You are using your independence. Okay, I will make the free will choice uh, to buy this toothpaste for you. That's, that's, you're using, now you're using your independence, but you're using your independence to do something that I asked you. But then you take that money and buy something for yourself. You just misused your independence. So, do something for yourself. That's misuse. Pretty simple, right? Sardia says, if Prabhupada didn't go to the details about where we fell from, can, can we conclude it's not really important? Well, he said it wasn't, yeah, so we can conclude. Also, if we need to know, Krishna could reveal the answer to us when we are qualified. Yeah. I think from everything I've read on this subject, your first point is the point, because... It, Prabhupada said in, in one letter in this discussion, he said, it doesn't matter. So that's why I gave that example. You fell from the hundredth floor or the fifth floor. It doesn't matter. The, the fact is you're injured and you need to go to the hospital. That's basically how he explained it. In this letter, he said, whether you fell from Krishna Loka or whether you fell from Brahman or he said somewhere else, he actually addressed that because that question was asked, where do we fall from? And he said, you are in neither now. You're not in Krishna Loka and you're not in Brahman. You are here. So it, it's interesting because if you study this topic and you see the questions that were asked to Prabhupada, and, and it, I think it's going to come up in what we're reading here. When the questions are asked, you 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 look at the question and you think, ah, this is the perfect question for Prabhupada to answer definitively where we've come from. So, if, you know, someone says, so if we fell from the spiritual world, and if we didn't fall from the spiritual world, Prabhupada could say, you know, if we fell from Leela with Krishna, Prabhupada could say, no, we didn't fall from Leela with Krishna. Or, you know, there, there are questions, you know, that have some context or, or doubt in it or their questions or statements of facts which Prabhupada could correct or refute and he doesn't it's just interesting and you could say he doesn't because he doesn't feel it's important so whether you fall from here or there Prabhupada's saying you're in neither right now so what does it matter <laughs> you know so th this is this comes up in our philosophy. You may have been somewhere, but now you're here. So it doesn't matter that you were somewhere because now you're here. What's the difference? If if you came from this place and I came from that place, what does it matter? We're both here. If you came to this world as a perfected being or you came to this world as an imperfected being and now you've become perfect, what does it matter where you came from? You're both in the same position. If you had COVID-19 and now you're healthy and I didn't and I'm healthy, now we're both health, healthy, so it doesn't... Well, maybe in that case it does because maybe that's a bad example. You had, you had a flu, you, now you're healthy. I didn't have a flu. Is there any difference between us? No, we're both healthy. That's the way Prabhupada chose to discuss this topic. And he didn't, he didn't get into those other details. He got into... You know, it doesn't matter where you come from because now you're here. Just as it doesn't matter where you came from, now you're, if you're a pure devotee and you're perfect, it doesn't matter because there's no difference. So it seemed like Prabhupada saying, you know, there's no difference. It doesn't matter because now you're here. And 
it mattered a lot to us because it just we were trying to make sense out of it all. And we're still trying to make sense out of it all. And I think the the I think in the way Prabhupada answers it, you you could say that it seems to be a topic that seems seems to be simple to understand, but the way Prabhupada's dealing with it is almost like it's almost like he's saying, look at you can't understand this. It's two things. You can't understand, you don't have to understand. Which, and he didn't say this, but you could say, which is why I'm not explaining more. And you can't understand, you don't have to understand. It's just like, let's not waste time with this. So, if you study all his answers, you, you get that impression that, you know, just understand you misused your independence. As far as this other stuff, yeah... It's not going to make sense to you, so don't worry about it. Just understand, you basically blew it out of envy of Krishna. You misused your independence. You came here. Understand that. You have to overcome the envy, overcome the misuse of independence, properly use your independence, and go back to Krishna. And that's what he wanted us to understand. So That's another reason he didn't get into details. And maybe... Maybe he he didn't get into details because he didn't want us to discuss this because he didn't feel it was important. So sometimes it would be like that. Like you, you'd ask a question to Prabhupada, he didn't feel it was important, so he'd answer another question. He'd answer a question you didn't ask or answer your question in a way that you didn't intend it because he felt or he knew that what you needed to hear was the answer he's giving not the answer to the question you asked. So, so, so often it was like that. Interesting, isn't it? Like, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to answer this question because, um, I'm not going to answer this question because it's the wrong question. Or I'm not going to answer this question because you wouldn't understand the answer. Sir D. Ross is saying, um, Oh, I think I read that. Can we include it's not really important? Yeah, I was just answering that question. Krishna Karshan says, If we were in the spiritual world, having perfect loving relationship with Krishna, and suddenly out of nowhere, envy appeared in us, it's a bit weird for me. And why after coming back to Krishna again... And why, again, we can misuse our independence. Well, it complicates it, because Prabhupada said, once you go back, you won't. And again, become envy for Krishna. It doesn't make any sense. So it complicates it a little bit, because Prabhupada's saying, once you go back, you can't fall. Okay. So you can fall in theory, but you can't fall, because you can't, because you won't because there won't be a desire there. Although there could be, there won't be, because coming in this world, you will have that experience and memory of misuse of independence, and you'll never misuse it. Although, philosophically speaking, you could. That's, that's my point. When you're talking about tattva, the truth of the philosophy, yes, you could. So, it seems often... When Prabhupada's talking about this fall from the spiritual world, he's talking about the tattva, not not actually what happens, but the tattva. He's like making a point. You have independence, you can fall anytime, anywhere, any place. And he doesn't go into the discussion, well, that you can't fall from Prema, you can only fall from Baba. He doesn't go there. He just he's making a philosophical point that independence can be misused. And you'll say, Well, does Yashoda have independence? Can she misuse it? And the answer will be, well, she'll never misuse it. Well, how come she won't and I will? You know, so then it's like, you'll go into this endless loop of, um, but what if and how come and that's not fair. And and and, and, and again, as, as you read what Prabhupada said, you see his focus is on basically envy, misuse of independence. And it's right there in the Gita, Icha Dvesha Samuttena. Dvanda Mahena Bharata, we're overcome by the duality of envy or anger, and Icha and desire, Icha Dvesha. Desire and anger, desire and repulsion. 
So that's that's the condition. That's a condition for remaining in the material world. As long as you have desire, attraction, and repulsion for material things, you remain here. And part of that repulsion is repulsion of God. I don't like God because God interferes with my freedom. I want to do whatever I want. And in the scriptures, he says, well, don't do that. That's not good for you. Well, I don't want someone telling me what to do, what not to do. Okay, fine. You you know, just come in this material world. You can do whatever you want, so-called. No one, no one's going to stop. You can't do whatever you want, but you can try to do whatever you want, and no one's going to stop you from trying to do it. Well, the police may stop you, but Krishna's not going to stop you. Uh, and, and, and in what we're seeing today in the world, the police may stop you for doing nothing if you're the wrong color. So it's a bad deal any way you look at it. You remember I was saying the other day, I was making that joke, you know, it's 10.30 at night, I'm washing the dishes, and I'm like, well, I came in this material world to be God, and now I'm like dead tired washing dishes at night. It's like, something wrong with this picture here. You know, being God is not as, being God is like, I thought it was going to be a lot easier than this. Now I'm working 12 hours a day in a coal, ma- coal mine, getting lung cancer, breathing the fumes. I thought being God was going to be better than that. Sorry. Um, you want to be God your own way? Well, I have some important information for you. You're not God, and that's why you're working in a coal mine 12 hours a day, because you're not God. And that's what happens when you try to become God. You go to the dentist, you know, they're pulling out your tooth or doing a root canal. And it's in those moments, at least for me, I think, that was a bad choice that I made to get a body, to want to enjoy this body. Because right now, there's absolutely no enjoyment, but only pain and discomfort. So like, what a deal, you know, I, I got this body to enjoy, and then there's so much pain and comfort, discomfort that comes with it. And now, you know, with the COVID thing, it's like, you know, the number of cases here in Alachua is going up. Duh! Well, they let, let everybody out, you know, and then everybody's out and everybody thinks you know, there's no more COVID. It's like, no, there is. It's just we think we have it under control. And as soon as they close the lockdown, it starts going up again. And some devotees here got it at the temple and blah, blah, blah. So it's like, hmm. I can't even do a good job of playing God right now because I can't even practically, you know, everywhere I go, it's dangerous. I could, you know, get sick and die. It's like, bad deal, bad deal. I got cheated. You know, when I came back from India, I ordered some things for my doing video production and classes. And I ordered three things, and I haven't got them. And they're all scams. Interesting. Well, I'm trying to... Well, I ordered four things, but I caught the scam on the fourth. I didn't... I actually realized that there are websites that are scams. Maybe I'll get them. Maybe I'll get my money back. Who knows? But... Not easy playing God, is it? So, um, anyway, so that's the point. So, attention, attention, all living entities who are envious of God, I wish to inform you that you must stay here in this world forever until you overcome that envy. And as long as you're trying to play God, well, all I can say to you is, good luck. It's not easy. Okay, we have another question. Comment. Does this mean that except for eternal associates of Krishna, the rest can fall from the spiritual world? Definitely, maybe. That's what we're talking about. There's a there's a definite mixing and matching of Siddhanta in our philosophy that some will say, yes, that's what Prabhupada taught, and some will say, no, you you can't fall from there. You have to fall from a lower place, from Brahman or from Krishna Leela on this planet. It sounds like what really matters is understanding what consciousness 
we need to cultivate to return to the spiritual world. Yeah, you said, you took the words right out of my mouth. Dustin says, I remember meeting, reading the analogy of the man dying after being shot with a poison arrow. And in his final moments, he asked, where did the arrow come from? <laughs> Who shot it? <laughs> Meanwhile, he's wasting his final moments. Yeah. Where did you hear that? That's a good one. I like that. And he's going to say, I heard it from you. I was like, yeah, that's my memories. Like, yeah. Could be um, where the arrow come from, who shot it. Meanwhile, he's wasting his final moments on what could be the time to remember Krishna. Still, it's an interesting subject. Yeah, I think that's a good example. Prabhu, did you chant your answer? No, what happened? Oh, I've been thinking about where I fell from. I just can't. It just doesn't make sense to me. I, like, I can't chant my rounds until I figure it out. I just like it. Yeah. Uh, I understand the point of Srila Prabhupada that we should focus on the future and not about the past. But if we made a mistake, we have to know what mistake we made. We already know we made a mistake. We're here. If we merely made a mistake, I have doubts about it. No, there's no doubt about the mistake. It's right there in Shastra. When you turn your back on Krishna, you come here. It's, that's that's clear. There's nobody disagrees on that. It's just where did you, you know, the only disagreement is like, were you on the 10th floor or the 100th floor when you turned your back? Did you, you know? You, we all turned up. We read the verse on Wednesday. Krishna Bhulya Jiva. That once you turn your back, Maya comes and says, "Hey, welcome." That's the verse. There's two verses like that. It's basically, like once you turn your back on Krishna, Maya welcomes you. Hey, hello, nice to see you. Let's get busy. I have all kinds of interesting things for you to do today. But first, we got to put on a bodysuit for you, and you're gonna have to take birth, and that's not so great. But you know, we'll see you in nine months, and we'll talk. But you won't be able to talk for a couple of years because you'll be a baby and also you're going to have to learn everything you forgot in your last life and I, I forgot to tell you that but you have to go to school to get back to z point zero where you were in your last life so yeah that's the problem huh, bad deal so Krishna Bulia the the, the um, living entity or Baya, this is where Baya, Baya means external. He, he turns his back on Krishna and then he faces Maya. That, that's basically, there's two famous verses like this. One is by, by Prabhupada Nanda Saraswati, I think. As soon as you turn your back on Krishna, there's Maya. Oh, welcome. I haven't seen you in a while. So here, just stand in line. Here's your body. Okay, here are your parents. All right, here's your... Here's a little chart here. What's going to happen in your life, your karma. And um, if you need anything, just let me know. I can help you enjoy. Basically, that's it. So that's what the Shastra says. But, but, so there's no controversy about how we got here. It's there in the Gita also due to envy. Um, it's just where we fell from. That's the only thing that there are differences of opinion in Shastra. Pretty sure the analogy was one of Srila Prabhupada's books. It sounds like a Ridhananda Marsh analogy. Can't remember which though. Was it SSR? Okay, you'll find it. I like the idea that when I go back to Godhead, Krishna won't let me fall again. No, you won't let yourself fall again. Anyway, of course, the other idea is nobody falls. Because you're in prema and, and you don't fall from prema. Anyway, we have to contend with the fact that Prabhupada chose to explain this thing in a certain way and we want to understand what his point was. And, and you don't have to worry when you go back to God that you won't fall, which Krishna Karshan will say, well, that proves you never fall because how could you fall? Uh, um, yeah. 
Krishna Karshan, he says, I had a discussion with Rai Swami, and he says that the Chari say we fell from Brahman and Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Uh, hold on. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur is saying in Jaiva Dharma that we are part of the. I can't. Is that Shrishta? I can't see it. Leela. Krishna had a desire to deliver saved souls, and that's why this material was created. To save us, we have to suffer, so it seems we're suffering for Krishna's. That I've never read anywhere. So maybe that's why Srila Prabhupada didn't want to say, because it's painful. True that we are suffering. Um, I've never heard anyone say that, and I've heard I've studied this in depth, and I've read Jaiva Dharma, and I've heard disciples of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta pretty much verbatim explain what he explained. And, it was always, you may have misunderstood this because it's always a living entity has independence. And even if you say Krishna wanted to save, it seems like it's after the fact because he needs someone to save who would independently choose to go to a place where they need to be saved from. So I would say maybe you didn't understand it properly or he didn't explain it in a way that it was clear to understand. Because there's nowhere in our philosophy that says, Okay, you, 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 down there, as I'm in the mood to save somebody, and, you know, we need some. Since you didn't volunteer, I have to choose some. So go down, and I'm going to save you, and that'll make me feel good. Mm. No, no. The you, you, and you that, that came, that was their decision, our decision. So, when you look in the mirror, Krishna Karshan, you can't say, well, it's not my fault. Krishna wanted me here. Um, and then we also have the uh, understanding that um, the understanding that um, you know, we're here and we haven't got out yet. So that's, even if we accept exactly what he said and Krishna said, you go, I want to save you. Krishna's doing a bad job of saving us, isn't he? Because we don't want to go back. And you say, well, it's because we've come here, we don't want to go back. But whatever the case is, we have a problem. We don't want to go back. That's the problem. So it's like, however you got here, the problem is we don't want to go back because we're attached. So Kamini says, Tripurai Swami Sangha tends to be very strong on the topic of where we fell from. I have good friends in that Sangha. I personally will be happy to move on from this topic. <laughs> it's hard to get away from because everyone's so interested in it. He, he's interested in the topic because on a sedantic level, he said, if this is the sedanta, if this is the sedanta, so we can, um, we need to know what the sedanta is because we have to represent it. Anyway, I'm just going to continue reading and then we'll see what comes up. Because... Uh, maybe more of this will come up, maybe it won't, maybe there'll be different topics. So this is called, well, look what this is called, Fall Down to the Material World Morning Walk. You can't get away from it. Uh, uh, anyway, we're going to read it. We're going to move on to the same topic. Mm. So D. Rasta says, In many places in Bhagavatam Purports, Prabhupada states that the material world is only due, created due to the desires of the conditioned souls. Yeah, exactly. We want to experience independent enjoyment, yeah. Or, you know, have you heard this example? A little child wants to cook. There's two, you can't cook. Her mother's cooking. I want to cook like you. So her mother gives her a little play stove, play pots. Okay, you turn it on here and some play vegetables and so the little child's making believe she's cooking while the mother's actually cooking. So that example was given to me by Ridan Anamash when I was, before I was a devotee. He was explaining that to me. And he told me, after he told that to me, I stopped and said, wow, that's a wonderful example. <laughs> I really liked it. So that's the example he gave to me like in, you know, October, November, 1969. You know, like, Krishna has given you this world. It's your play set. It's not the real world. 
the real world's there. This is your playset. You're playing. This is play cooking. Or another example is, mother, mother, I want the moon. Okay. So she gives the child a mirror and she says, just put put the mirror in this direction and the moon will be in the mirror and then you'll have the moon. So, okay. That's what you get. You get the reflection. Okay, let's read. Srib Dhamadharm. Srib Dhamadharm. Mahaprabhu Prabhupada. Yes. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. By mercy of spiritual master, the mercy of Krishna, he gets the seed of devotional service. And if he cultivates, then his life becomes successful. Otherwise, he has to rotate sometimes up, sometimes down, sometimes this grass, sometimes lion. Paramhansa. But ultimately, if we come to Krishna, there's no return. But nevertheless, Jagai and Madai, the two gatekeepers, they return. Prabhupada. There is return. That is voluntary. Return is there. If we, Paramahansa, if we want, Prabhupada, yes. Paramahansa, so we can come to the spiritual world and return, Prabhupada, yes. Dun, 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 dun. Life is getting complicated. Paramahansa, fall down, Prabhupada, yes. As soon as we try, oh, quote, oh, this material world is very nice. Yes, Krishna says, yes, you go. Just like nobody is interested in Krishna consciousness. You think everyone is interested? So they want to enjoy this material world. Otherwise, what is the meaning of free will? Every living entity has got a little free will. And Krishna is so kind, he gives him opportunity. All right, you enjoy like this. Just like some of our students. Krishna consciousness, sometimes... They go away, again come back. It is free will, not stereotype. Just like one goes to the prison house. Not that the government welcomes, come on, we have got prison house, come here, come on, come here. He goes out of his free will. Again he comes out, again goes, like that. Krishna bahir mukkahana bhogavanchakari. That was one of the verses. Nikata sta maya tari japatiya trai from Prem Bhivarta. And that means Krishna, uh, one, as soon as one turns their back to Krishna and wants to enjoy, immediately Maya comes and beats them on the head. Boom, 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 boom. Threefold miseries. The police is there, just like the police car was there. We have nothing to do with it. But if you do anything criminal, immediately you will be arrested under police custody. The Maya may be there. But Maya captures him who is not a devotee of Krishna. That's all. Therefore, mam eva ye prapadyante mayam etan tarantite. Anyone who surrenders unto me, Maya does not interfere anymore. Paramhansa. So our desire to enjoy, we achieve these bodies, and our desire to achieve Krishna brings us to our natural position. Prabhupada, yes. Paramhansa. But then again, there's this constant struggle with our lower nature. We are constantly fighting our desires, even though we want to serve Krishna. This continues? Prabhupada. What is that? I do not follow. Paramhansa. Well, like many devotees, they experience the difficulty that although they sincerely want to love God and serve Him, yet their body is almost like another dictator within them. Prabhupada. Yes, that means he is strongly under the grip of maya. Paramhansa, even though the desire exists, yes, just like a thief, he knows that if I still steal, I will be arrested, I will be put into jail. And he has seen that one thief, he has stolen, he is arrested. Still he commits theft. He knows everything. Why does he commit theft? So this is, this is like one of the, the, the big tortures of material life that you're... Well... <laughs> Not really so much a torture of material life. It's it's more of a torture. Torture. It's more of a torture of uh, spiritual life because material life. Sometimes you you know you you get addicted to something, but everybody's not. Everybody doesn't have big addictions beyond you know like your favorite food or your favorite movies or something. But the hard addictions are. It's more. It's not common, but. When you become Krishna conscious, there's this other layer 
of um or when you say there's a higher standard and so your 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 standards are higher so the normal pullings that would not be considered addictions or wrong for most people now become wrong or bad or kind of like addictive pushings so this is just something we have to be very tolerant towards and patient in our advancement. And the, the problem is, I mean, if you want to overcome something, then every time you give in to that thing that you want to overcome, the way it's explained is a seed, you know, plants have seeds, or if you look at Tulsi, you know, the Munjaris, that's where the seeds are. So, a seed drops, there'll be another plant. So the example is given that every time we do something that we want to stop doing, it drops a seed, and the seed represents the desire to do it again. And that's why people will say, when they do something that they promised themselves they would never do again after they do it, they promise themselves again, I will never do it again. But the problem is because they did it, the desire to do it is a little bit stronger than it was before they did it. That's the, that's kind of like the, the, the become a prisoner of addiction. So every time you do it, the seed drops and the seed is the inclination to do it again. It becomes the inclination to do it becomes reinforced. So if you're trying to give up a bad habit, or as he's saying here, we want to give up something, be Krishna conscious, and we're being pulled to do something else. The way that it's done, and it's very important for us to understand, is we have to give up doing it. Or at least minimize it so it's done less and less and less. You, you, <laughs> there's a way of doing something so it doesn't become an addiction. There's a way of doing something to overcome a desire, and there's a way of doing something that it becomes an addiction. And certain things are more addictive, and the things which give you the greatest, greatest, greatest pleasure are the most addictive. I was reading an article this morning. We've just, we've just launched a WhatsApp group with my godbrother and a Facebook page to help devotees deal with sexual problems. So he wants me to post some things on the Facebook page. We're just starting. It's called For Vaishnavas Struggling with Sexual Issues. So I was reading this morning an article about uh, addictive mentality. And um, this is exactly what the article said. He said, it said, well, I'll elaborate on it. Said, it said, it is specifically in the realm of sexual addictions. It said, you get more dopamine. Dopamine is the happiness or pleasure hormone. He said, you get more dopamine from sexual encounters, even if it's just in your mind, than anything else. And so, the more you get pleasure from something, the more addictive it becomes, right? You know, it's like, Oh, you don't say I'm addicted to something which is not a high rating of pleasure. I'm a, I'm addicting to mow, mow, I'm addicted to mowing my lawn. <laughs> it's not like mowing your lawn for most people is just the chore. It's you know maybe gratifying once you mow it. You might have fun, but most people wouldn't be addicted. Or even if you were, it, you know I mow my lawn three times a day. I don't know why. It probably wouldn't be the greatest. The addiction to give up. You just stop doing it and, you know, two days later you're fine. But the more there's pleasure in the activity, the more addicted it becomes. The more the hormones of pleasure are released. And Pantanjali says, when you do something which is pleasurable, it creates the desire to do it again. And it's natural. It's easy to understand. It's, you know, it's That's where attachment comes from. You know, Generally, you don't become attached unless you find some pleasure in something. And sometimes you might say, but I'm attached to doing something, but it causes me suffering. That's either the mode of ignorance, just you're totally mad, 
or there is pleasure in it. It just ends up causing you suffering, but you're getting pleasure in it, and that pleasure is the addictive aspect of it. So, the answer to this question, Prabhupada saying he's strongly under the grip of Maya, it means he's allowing Maya to control him. But my point is to remember is if any of you have any kind of addiction, every time you give into that addiction, the inclination to do that activity again is now a little bit stronger. And every time the temptation is there and you don't give into it, the inclination to do it next time is a little bit weaker. And that's how you overcome addictions. And so therefore, in Krishna consciousness, you have these regulations. Don't do this or regulate this because the things that we're doing that are addictive materially, we have to either stop or control so the inclinations are removed. That's how it works. Okay. We have more time to read. But I'm not sure which each, uh, each of these quotes um, are talking about because I, I read them once and I copied them a few days ago. Um, I have some comments. I also have many close friends in Tupra Marsha's Sangha. He's often visiting Paul and he really talks about fall down on the soul. Tripura um very is much, very much interested in discussing and disseminating Siddhanta. Siddhanta meaning the proper philosophical understanding of our philosophy. And that's, that's why he focused on that as a philosophical issue that needs to be clarified. But I don't think in ISKCON it's going to be resolved entirely. I think the only way it can be resolved is, is by saying that it appears that Prabhupada had um, a different understanding slightly. It also appears that Prabhupada did agree that we fell from Brahman in some places. So that's why it, it kind of remains confusing. And, and that's why it seems best that at a certain point you just go, ay ay ay, or you say oy vey. Depends what country you're from. If you're Jewish, you say oy vey. Ay ay ay, or you're Italian, you say mamma mia, a chihuahua, or whatever you say in your country. Or as devotees would say, oh my Govinda, you know, you just hit this point and go, okay, you know, this is like beyond my, this, this understanding this is beyond my pay level. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't have time to think about it any longer. Okay. Davina says, I really like that seed analogy. Resonates so well with me. Haha, what are you addicted to? Chocolate. I find it diff difficult to give up habits that aren't helpful to me. Yeah. Well, the best way to give up a habit is cut it out entirely or minimize it. Prabhupada in the, you know, smoke one less cigarette a day till you're not smoking. Or, you know, take one less of whatever it is. Or, you know, on... Um, you remember we were talking about cell phones and I had read this article when they were recommending that you should fast one day from social media. So, okay, and then we were talking about Sundays. You just, like, turn all the social media off on Sunday. And someone will say, but Prabhu, if I turn it off, I, I don't know what to do. What will I do all day? I, I might kill myself. Yeah, That's the point. You don't know what to do because you're addicted to it. But, but Prabhu, if I turn it off, is it okay if I if I just hold it? You know, so I just feel it. You know, because I'm really addicted. You know, is, is that okay? I mean, I won't turn it on. I'll, I'll just look at it, and then I'll close it, and I'll put it down. But I just I just need to touch it and, and look at it. I just need to know it's still there. Is, is that okay? Yeah. And you think that's funny? I can guarantee you, some people are so addicted if. They turn their phones off. That's what they would do. I'll just carry it with me, you know, in case there's a 9-11, um, there's an emergency, I need it. So that's how you break addictions. You you don't go there. You just got to like, you know, this is like, 
this is like the lie. Um, there's a there's an interesting TED talk. You may want to watch it. I think it would be very helpful, especially if you have addictions. It's about how we lie to ourselves. And lying to ourselves is a very interesting phenomenon that maybe we're not all aware of, or we are aware and we don't want to admit it. But she gave the example, long ago I gave this example, I think it's a great example, and, and that's where this example comes from. She said, you're hungry, it's late at night, or you get up from bed hungry, and you tell yourself, I'll just, I'll just eat a few potato chips. And she said, when you say that, you're lying to yourself because never in your life have you ever opened a bag of potato chips and eaten just a few. You've never done it. It's like an impossibility for all of us, or most of us, at least... That person who's never done it, it's an impossibility for them. And she says, so why are you lying to yourself? And then you lie again and say, I'll never do that again. So it's kind of like that, you know. I'll just, could I just hold, can I just carry it with me? I won't turn it on. Liar, liar, you carry it with you, you will turn it on. So, you know, I think what you need to do is find a safe, get your phone stick it in the safe, lock it, and give your key to someone and say, don't give me this key back, even if I have a gun at your head. For 24 hours, don't give me this key back, right? And those 24 hours, like, oh, what am I going to do today? I'm gonna ch I haven't checked my, I haven't checked my Instagram in the last three minutes. I'm going nuts. Oh. And you'll realize, if people did that, they would realize, you know, we say, you're addicted to your phone. And like, yeah, yeah, right, right, yeah. Lock your phone up and give someone the key, and then you'll know if you're addicted or not. If you're like, I think a lot of us, especially as devotees, would say, "Well, that was actually the best day of my life. I chanted more rounds, I read more, or, you know, I did more service." So that's the um, that's something that w you may want to consider doing if you have an addiction to something that you feel is unhealthy. I mean, obviously there are addictions that are healthy, you know. Some people like to walk every day. Well, that's a healthy addiction, unless you walk like 14 hours a day and don't do anything. Well, that's a good addiction, you know. I'm addicted, I'm addicted to eating salads. Oh, I feel so sorry for you. You're addicted to eating salads. No, that's a good addiction. So it's not that addictions are bad. It's those addictions that we don't want in our life. I'm addicted to chanting Hare Krishna. Wow, great addiction. I wish I had that. Addiction. I'm praying every day for that addiction. So that's the idea. If you want to break an addiction, then one strategy is you can just don't do it for a day or for this week, and we're fasting from whatever, whatever it is. Okay, so is that okay? This is, um, it's a big topic. Uh, this has become a very big topic when, when, social media became available to everyone because I read a figure uh, that 80% of the websites are pornographic. That's hard to believe because if you don't look at pornography, you would never know that because you just look at what you look at. It doesn't seem like you even see a pornographic site. You know. But that's what they say. So that, you know, and it, it doesn't even matter if that, whatever the figures are, it just matters that it's available online for any little kid. So we're living in a world of of instant gratification. It's very easy to become addicted. And all those... I never played those video games. But I, I understand they're quite addictive. Uh, I saw a little story about one kid who spent the whole day in his room and his parents couldn't get him out of the room. He was addicted to video games. And he got really, really angry when they tied, tried to turn off his computer. So, you know, Davina, I think... I think one way we could frame this conversation is if if we have the nature to be addicted, well, let's find things to be addicted to that are actually healthy. Let's find the things we'd like to be addicted to. And so I can use my tendency for addiction to be addicted to doing things which will help me. So that's another option. Uh, perhaps we should just accept what Prabhupada told us as much as we can understand. Yeah. Um, that's generally how we'll deal with it, Saradiya, but the problem is that there, the other realities exist of the other philosophical side, and it's like you can't 
it's hard to just ignore it and pretend it doesn't exist, at least in discussing this topic. Can a faith that Prabhupada gave us everything we need to know? Yeah, yeah. But even even those who are dedicated to Prabhupada will say that it appears that he did explain, he did say we fell from the spiritual world. It appears that, and he appears that he did say we fell from Brahman. Now, what to do? I am I am so confused. I I think I'll just go to sleep. You know, like you ever do that? You get so confused, you just go to sleep. That is called the Tamaguna way out of your problems. What do you do when you have lots of problems? Well, I just go to sleep. Well, some people drink. That's another way, another solution. I have to admit, I'm addicted to my phone. Okay, every Sunday, lock it up. Give your husband the key, and uh, don't threaten him if he doesn't give you back the key. The first thing I am doing after waking up is check my phone. Yeah, that, well, that's a sign of addiction. But um, you know, and that phone addiction is is more serious than you think. Because a godbrother of mine told me that he went to a therapist, and the therapist said, "You are so addicted, I can't even, I can't even." free you from the addiction. All I can do is just tell you to turn it off as many hours a day as you can so it doesn't ruin your life. I'm addicted to learning. It can get in the way of taking action. Yeah. I also have that addiction to learning. Sometimes I'm supposed to do something and I find something interesting to learn and I'll spend time learning it. And I'm like, I I can't do that. I can't learn everything. You have, some of us have this like nature. We want to learn everything. And so it's like, ah, where did the day go? Well, I learned a lot today. Is any of it useful for what you're doing? No, but it was interesting. <laughs> yeah. You've been there also? Looking for the TED Talk you mentioned. Could this be it? The pattern behind self-deception. If it's a lady, if that's Michelle, not Michael, it's a lady. One thing we forgot about lying is that we often lie to, to ourselves. Is she, she a woman? She's a woman who has a PhD in psychology. And if it's a woman and she talks about her research in psychology, that's it. So you're going to have to look and you're just going to have to go there and look for a minute. And if it's a man, no, that's not it and then see if a woman comes up there. I'm addicted to your classes, so enlightening. Okay, good addiction. Good addiction. Addicted to hearing. Okay, let's read something else. I titled this uh, conversation, this is 1969, Boston. I, I, t I titled this conversation, How to Remember Something That You Never Knew. Oh, okay, there's the link. It's very interesting. I've watched it twice. Because the workshop, the, the retreat we did in Mayapur this year was a lot about self-deception. Self-deception. If you have no false ego, there will be no self-deception. You will, you will just be... No false ego, it means you're real. When you're humble, you're real. It's just you, you see everything as it is. You don't filter it to make yourself feel good. Because without false ego, even when you see your faults, it doesn't make you feel bad. It's just like, okay, that's who I am. You know, I was listening to a talk on, uh, it's a side point, but I think it's a good point. Rana Swami gave a talk on devotee care. And he was saying that Jai Takamaraj is like the Acharya of devotee care. He's so concerned about people's welfare. And he was he was glorifying Maharaj. He's saying he's saying Maharaj is, is so selfless. I appreciate him so much. He cares so much. And he was describing events that he witnessed, both with Maharaj and Bhakti Tirtha Swami, both how much they cared about other devotees and how much sacrifice they would make. And he was appreciating them so much. And and 
And when I heard, I just heard that, and then I started chanting my rounds, and and I was thinking, it, it, it's this is this is an indication of someone who is humble, someone who doesn't have false ego, that when they see the good in others, they the, the appreciation they have for that person goes very deep in their heart because they're humble. There's nothing in the way and say, well, I also am selfless and, you know, he's, he's okay, you know, he's he's selfless, but so many people are selfless and I'm selfless also. And, uh, he didn't think that way. He just thinks this person is selfless. I appreciate them so much. So I, I thought when I was listening to that, I thought this is a really good metric for us. Like, how often do you appreciate other devotees, especially your god brothers and god sisters, especially equals? How often do you recognize their greatness? How often do you appreciate it? And is it hard for you to do that? Do you do you kind of like try to minimize it because then it makes you look not as good? And so I thought these are important things to think about, don't you think? And they're real. They're real indicators of our advancement, our humility, and our lack of false ego that we can appreciate someone. And you might say, well, it seems simple to appreciate someone if they do something wonderful. It would seem that way, but it's not always the case. Sometimes it's hard to appreciate someone because the false ego gets in the way because you think, well, I could do that also. I'm great also. Um, yeah. So here's the class comedy is putting it up. It's about devotee care. Um, there's been a lot of talk about devotee care, and recently I've been involved in some conversations about it. I don't know if recently there's been more talk, but I think it's a sign that our movement maybe is becoming more compassionate, that we're talking, we're really concerned about taking care of devotees. Okay, um, let's read one more thing. And this is the last thing in this article, and today's Friday, so I better, I better do some more studying Otherwise, we'll have nothing to read next week. So, how to remember something that you never knew. Room conversation, April 27th, 1969, Boston. Prabhupada. So, you lectured there? That's nice. Now, you have to lecture. I will have to retire. 1969, Prabhupada's turning over the movement. Whoa. I want that all my students now should be prepared. Purushottam, you sit down. You are standing. You come here, sit down. When at present, when we speak of past, present, future, we refer to this particular creation of my body, is it not? Similarly, never return back. Never return back means, what is your question? I'm missing the, some context here. It sounds like he's talking about never, he's talking about returning back to the spiritual world. And he's like, questioning that devotee what is the what is the question that if we've never been with krishna if we've never been in krishna loka then how is it that we start remembering his pastimes and his form Prabhupada, you remember krishna's pastimes by hearing bhagavatam you can hear krishna's pastimes that you can remember but how can we remember if we've never known them before how can you remember if we haven't known it Prabhupada, you can know it by hearing the bhagavatam why we are citing so many scriptures, Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, just to remember. So why did I include this? Just to confuse all of you. Why? Because when I was reading this, I was thinking. The devotee is saying, we can't remember something we never knew. So he's making, he's making a statement, right? If we've never been with Krishna, he's making that assumption, that statement. If we've never been Krishna... How can we remember something we've never been with? Because remembering means you've been with it, right? If you haven't, then you can learn about it, not remember it. So, just as a point of discussion, you can meditate on this for all this weekend, and you know, I hope you still chant your rounds while you're meditating on this. Isn't this a perfect point for Prabhupada to say, no, you were with Krishna? That's why you can remember. I mean, if there's any time Prabhupada could say it, here it is. He could say it here, and he doesn't. Now, if you follow this conversation a little further, he does say something similar. He does say, he does allude a little bit that, no, 
we were with Krishna. But it's it's kind of it's not so clear. It's not so direct. It's a little bit on the side. But but here he chooses to answer the question by saying, "You remember Krishna's pastimes. That's how you remember." So if I hear about Krishna, then I can remember. Okay, that makes sense. Shravanam comes first, hearing, chanting, and then Smaranam comes third, remembering. Because if I hear and I chant, I'm going to remember what I hear and chant. So that's the idea, and that's how it's explained. Here, he's talk, Prabhupada's talking about remembering in this, at least you can say it's this context. If you read Bhagavatam, you remember. So he's not addressing that if I never knew Krishna, how could I remember? He's saying, well, you can remember if you read Bhagavatam, then you'll remember what you read, and then you're remembering. Now you can think of Krishna. And Prabhupada may be using thinking and remembering in the same way. But I just thought that was interesting, and I don't want to and I don't want to say anything more about it. But I just thought it was interesting because if there is ever a good time to say no be with Krishna or what you're saying is wrong, which Prabhupada often does when someone asks a question, he corrects them because the question reveals a misunderstanding and he doesn't correct it. That's interesting. So, I will leave you totally confused. But, is it this or is it that? And you're all going to, you're all going to write me back on, on, you're all going to come back Monday and go, Prabhu, I have a neck ache. Why? Because is it this? Is it that? Is it, hmm, my neck hurts from going back and forth. That last thing you read, I'm just, just trying to understand it. And I'm a little bit dizzy from moving my head back and forth and I haven't eaten all weekend because I lost my appetite thinking about this. Well, anyway. Sorry for that, everyone. I apologize for if this is going to confuse you, but I thought it was interesting anyway. Okay. Um, this was the last thing. Kamaniya, I just read the last thing. Do, 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 that takes us to page 13. We've read it all. And I'll have to add to it. I... If there's anything on here you think we haven't read because I skip forward, please let me know. And we'll, or you can just message me. It's possible I skip forward because I wanted to read some things. Uh, Morning Walk, January for Los Angeles. No, we read that. I think we read everything. Mm. Yeah, okay. So we'll end here. Um, in, two and a, in two hours and 25 minutes, we're going to do a Japa session. So if you want to attend that, we chant for an hour. We read little from the affirmations, get in the mood, and then we chant Japa. And then I'm doing a class at 1 o'clock. No, this is a private. It's like it is to go see for the Scotland, Temple in Scotland. Scotland. For the Temple in Scotland. It's difficult to understand Scottish accent, you know. I can't even imitate it. But I know. They don't say Burphy, they say Murphy. I bet you some Murphy. I like to eat. I like to eat some Murphy. Huh? A rock beach on Murphy. What did you say? I said I like to eat some Murphy. Mm. Could you say that in English? Probably I said it in English. Yeah. Anyway, we have fun when we're there in Scotland. Okay. I think he said I want to eat some Murphy. I think that's what he said. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hare Krishna. So, also, okay, what's coming up this weekend? Oh, I have so many fantastic things coming up this weekend that I can't remember. We have a class. We have a kirtan, I think, tomorrow or Sunday. Anyway. Okay, hold on, everyone. It's time. 2 p.m. on Saturday, we have a class in Portuguese, but I will speak. I won't speak in Portuguese, so you can attend the class. It'll be on Zoom. It's advertised. It's about how to work together to work for Prabhupada. And then at four fifteen Eastern Standard Time, I'm going to be chanting the Brahma Samhita for a bhakti retreat in Argentina. And then I have to hold on. I want to check what I'm going to do on Monday. Whoops, hit the wrong button. I'll be right back. I want to check Sunday schedule. Don't go away. 10.30 Kirtan, 12 o'clock, a discussion on Japa related to how to get your kids to chant. 5 o'clock, a class 
in Spanish, Argentina, and I forgot the topic. It's an interesting topic. In seven o'clock, class in Spanish, and I forgot the topic, but it's an interesting topic. So that's it. Sunday's a busy, busy day. <laughs> Two kirtans in three classes. Hare Krishna. Mercy for me, huh? Okay, so we'll see you there. But everything should be on Facebook advertised or in one place on my website, mahatmadas.com. You can see it. Okay, thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. <laughs>